Hi, I'm Ardeth, and today I've got a double stencil technique to share with you. But wait, there's more. My friend Jerry is joining me today, and we're going to double the videos and techniques, and that means double the fun. Hi Jerry, I'm so excited to try this new type of collaboration where we get to try each other's techniques. Are you ready to double the fun with our double techniques? Oh yes, let's all double it up. For my double stencil technique, you'll need two stencils, one of which has bigger holes and one with smaller holes. I'm using the Alta New Bursting Dahlia and Feeling Dotty stencils. You don't need a Misty, but it can be helpful and I'll explain more about that in a minute. I've masked off the portions of the stencil that I won't be using and I'm also creating a bit of a hinge with more post-it tape along the top. This will help me make sure that I can lift and put down my stencil in the same place. I decided to use my Misty with the mouse pad removed to give me a corner to put the cardstock and the stencils in, and this will also help me keep the stencils in the same position. I put my cardstock under the stencil, and then I blended ink through it onto the stencil. I've chosen four of the new Date Night colors from Catherine Pooler. I started with Pucker Up, which is a really bright magenta pink, and I put it down in about a quarter of the shape. I moved on to Catching Rays, which is a golden yellow. I overlapped it a bit into the pink and got an orange blend, and I made sure to put some into the next quadrant as well. I like to use brushes rather than sponges through stencils, since I think they hold up better with less damage. Here I'm using the small Ulta New blending tools, but any ink blending tools you have will work here. Then I moved on to Cummerbund, which is a cool aqua, and finally Serenade, which is a rich periwinkle, and I created blends between each overlap. One good tip at this point is to make sure that you don't blend the inks too heavily since you want the next layer of stenciling to be quite visible. I'm finished my first layer of blending. Jerry, how are you doing so far? I'm giving this technique a try with paint, which is a great option too. With uh, using wet wipes for the first layer, my tip, make sure the wipe is not too wet. That's great! I never thought to do it with paint. I think I'll try that next time. Now it's time to lift the floral stencil back and slide the dotty stencil underneath. You could put the dotty stencil over top and that would remove the need for lifting and replacing the floral stencil, but it would also mean that the dots are further away from the paper and you might get a less crisp impression. I worked my way back through the colors simply because that's the order they're now in on my desk. Serenade, Cummerbund, Catching Rays, and Pucker Up. And when I remove this stencil, I have a lovely crisp flower with dots on the petals. Jerry, how's it going? I found checking how the first stencil was on the card before adding the other one was very helpful. So you can see what you're doing, especially if the pattern is asymmetrical. To finish this card, I stamped a simple Ulta New Happy Birthday sentiment with black ink, and I added some white iridescent pearls as embellishments. Let's check back with Jerry. It's pretty easy, isn't it? What do you think of the technique? This is super cool and the result is absolutely stunning and very easy to do. For my second card, I started with something that isn't even really a stencil. It's a cardstock die cut of the Pink Fresh Modern Blooms cover plate. My second stencil is a striped stencil from Birch Press Design. I've prepped the backs of both of these stencils with some pixie spray and I started by putting down the die cut onto my cardstock. This time I'm blending the ink selectively through my homemade stencil and I put Pucker Up down on the roses and then I came in with Catching Rays just for the centers. Then I went over the rest of the panel with Twilight, which is a nice light grey, and I filled in the leaves and the other areas around the flowers. Two things to note here. First, my silicone craft mat is kind of gripping my cardstock, so I'm not worried about holding it in place. Second, you can clearly see that I'm not worried about the smoothness of my blend. These inks really smooth out as they dry, and that will help, but also by coming back in with another layer through the next stencil, the blend will also become less choppy. To give my grey a kind of greenish tint, I added some skylight ink. This is something I like to do with these inks, mixing them together to get a new colour. This time I didn't lift up the floral stencil, I just placed the striped stencil over top. I press down each of the stripes to try and get them to stick as well as they can to that bumpy surface underneath. I blended the ink through using the same colors in the same places so that the stripes will have a tone on tone look. When I lifted the stripe stencil you can see the pattern in the deeper colors. And then I decided to try something wild. 
and possibly against the rules. Let me check with the expert. Jerry, do you think it's okay for me to add a third stencil or am I taking this double stencil thing one step too far? You're going to double it up some more. I think we can allow it. You go, girl. I left the die cut stencil in place and this time I'm going to use the dotty stencil from my first card and blend ink only through the areas where the roses are. Now these striped flowers also have polka dots. To finish this card, I trimmed the panel down to a square, paying careful attention to the edges of the pattern so that all four sides look cut off rather than just two of them. I cut a circle from the center to give me some clear space and I stamped a sentiment from a Jillian Vance design directly onto my card base. I hope you enjoyed seeing both of us using my double stencil technique, and I hope you're inspired to look at your collection and give this technique a try. Now it's time to head to Jerry's channel to see both of us try her double stencil technique. Yes, come on over to check out my video. It's linked right here so you can see more double, because we both want you to... Double the fun! And keep on crafting!